Hello world, Krista here with Books and Jams, and today I'm going to do a little book chat with you. I haven't done too many book chats on my channel. I would like to try to do more. To be honest, they're a little bit intimidating for me because I often just react to a book based on how it makes me feel, and I am not super critical. So if you're looking for a really critical book review, I am probably not the one to give it to you, but I will just share a few of my thoughts on books and the, th the books that I'm hoping to just be motivated to review are the books that are a part of my BookTuber Recommends project. So I had 12 different BookTubers give me recommendations and each month I'm going to pull one out of the jar. I'll put the link up here of that video so you can see which books I'm hopefully going to talk about. I'm going to try to do a little bit more reviewing this year overall. It's not an official goal, but I am going to try. So the first book that I chose from my BookTuber Recommends jar was recommended by Maria at Read, Create, Read, Create, Repeat Homeschool. I will link her channel down below. And the book that she recommended, among others, is The Girl Who Came Home by Hazel Gaynor. And I just completed this book a couple days ago. So I thought I would talk with you about it for just a quick few minutes here. So this is a historical fiction, which I love, and Maria knows that, which is probably why she recommended it. And it's set during the Titanic. So it is set actually on the Titanic for part of the time. This story follows Maggie Murphy and 13 others who come from a village in Ireland and travel aboard the Titanic to start a new life in America. So at the beginning of the book, we start out in Ireland and we meet a few of the characters, especially Maggie, and we meet her love interest, Seamus, in Ireland and her aunt, Kathleen, who is the reason that she is traveling to America. And then we, after a few chapters of getting to know these characters, we we jump ahead in time to 1982. So that happened in 1912. So at the beginning of each chapter, we learn very clearly where and when that chapter is from. So we have a couple different timelines here. So in 1982, we meet Grace, who is Maggie's great granddaughter, who comes home because her father is very ill. She stops college and um, but we learn that she's a writer and has an opportunity to write an article for the Chicago Tribune and is having trouble coming up with a story. So eventually Maggie opens up to her granddaughter, great granddaughter, and tells her things about the Titanic that she hasn't spoken with with anyone else in the family. Maggie has Grace go up to the attic and get a little black case which is filled with artifacts and ticket stubs and a journal that Maggie kept during this time. So I really loved the journal entries that were in here as well. Um, but that's the basic story is we learn Maggie's, so we go between two different timelines, both in Ireland and in 1982, and then aboard the Titanic as well. We meet a few other characters, Maggie's friends and one of the stewards on aboard the, the ship. And we see what life was like a little bit in Ireland. We see what life was like in the Titanic. And then we see the family dynamics in a little bit more modern day, not quite modern day, 1980s was like, oh, quite a while ago, but modern day in a sense uh, of the family dynamics of Maggie and what her life is like now post Titanic. I really, really enjoyed this book. It captivated me from the get go. I loved Maggie and her character. She just was very kind and sweet. The boy that she loved wasn't the most outgoing and wild boy. He was kind of quiet and shy and overlooked by some of the other girls. Uh, but he was the one that she chose and and they had a, a beautiful little teenage romance going on at the beginning of this story and it was very sad when she had to leave him. Hazel Gaynor did a great job describing the Titanic. Now if you've seen the movie or read any other books about the Titanic, it's not going to be anything that you didn't know already. But again, just capturing the the feel of the enormous... Enorm enormousity. <laughs> Capturing the feel of how big the boat was and what an imposing sight it was when it pulled up uh, into the harbor and just aboard the ship, the, the great distinction between the first class people that were on the upper decks and as you went lower in the, in the boat, how things changed. Um, but just the fun that they had on the third deck, this group of girls from the town in Ireland running around the ship and kind of exploring and uh, getting together to sing after dinner for little parties and the steward would sneak them up to get glimpses of the of the first 
class passengers and their lifestyle aboard the ship. Um, all of that was very well done and, and captivating. Although there was a lot of detail, I didn't feel bogged down by it because um, I was kind of experiencing it through the eyes of these girls. And then, of course, spoiler alert, the boat sinks, right? So just the process of how um, some of them get off the boat or don't get off the boat was, uh, I, kept, I was on the edge of my seat reading those bits because I wanted them all to survive because you grow attached to them a little bit. Um, not all of them. There were some of the characters, I guess, were a little bit flat, but you really were rooting for Maggie and for her friends uh, that, that you met along the way. Maggie is telling her story to Grace because Grace's father passes away very early. She comes home from college because he's ill and he ends up passing away. But then she stays home for another year and a half to two years and kind of put her life on hold. And so in a way, Maggie's telling her this story in order to shake her up a bit, shake up Grace and get her moving again and encourage her to continue on with her life. And, and of course it does. So Grace begins to write her grandmother, her great grandmother's story, knowing that it's a huge, it's a huge story. I just really liked their relationship together. This great grandmother and Grace and Maggie, um, their, the way that they interact with each other was really special. I also liked that at the beginning of each section, there were actually, I like that this is based on a true story. I don't know if I've said that. So this is actually based on a group of 14 people who came from the same village in Ireland. So the names have all been changed and fictionalized, of course, but I like that there um, is a, a level of truth to all of this, which is kind of fun. And at the beginning of each section, there are these um, telegrams that were actual telegrams sent from the Titanic to say the Carpathia, which is the boat that was the first one to come and rescue some of the people from the water. Um, a couple telegrams from the Titanic to uh, people at home. So there are a few actual telegrams in there, which is kind of cool to read. And I really enjoyed this book. I have not read very much historical fiction based on the Titanic. So this was very interesting to read. I gave it five stars because I just loved it so much. I loved the characters. I cried tears of joy. I cried tears of sadness. I laughed a couple times. I fell in love with some of the characters and I fell in love with the story. So if historical fiction is your bag and you like the Titanic at all, then this might be a book for you. So take a look at it. Comment below if this sounds interesting to you at all or any thoughts that you might have. I know a few of you have picked this up already, so I'm interested to hear your thoughts as well. Let me know what you think. That's it for today. Please like, comment, and subscribe and all that jazz. I'll talk to you soon. Bye!